In this video, I'm going to be discussing and showing you an example of a Claymore type directional mine. Now, it's not going to be the US made M18A1 like you see up against the wall there. It's going to be this a Viet Cong made wooden version of the M18 Claymore mine. Now, I came across a picture of this when I was looking up information on the VC made DH-10 directional mine. When I was looking for images so I could get some technical information, in it was a picture from like a museum or someone's personal collection of a wooden claymore. Now, I did not bookmark it. I did not print off a copy of it. I should have because I have not found that picture again or that page again and I've spent this entire week looking. So I gotta go off of memory what I remember from seeing it from last week. Now essentially it looked to me like a PMD6 with legs. Now when I looked up for information on this in US military publications from the Vietnam era, from the 1960s, 1970s, I couldn't find anything. I found references to a metallic or a uh, rectangular version of the Claymore mine made by the VC, a rectangular DH-3, but nothing in there about wooden versions. But like I said, someone did have a picture of one in a Vietnam collection or in their Vietnam collection and it was from Vietnam. It said that in the caption. So it had been captured in country, deactivated, brought back to the US. So I'm going off of memory here when I recreated this. Now, it is a rectangular box essentially. We have a larger piece of wood on the front, larger piece on the back, and then my section around here in the center. It had metal legs. Now the ones on the real mine, they did not show a picture of the underside, they just showed a picture from like this angle here, from looking at it from the side, from a god-like view from high above, so you could see the uh, cap well was roughly centered over where the explosive block would be. You could see the construction of the wood but it did not show the construction of the legs. My guess is, more than likely, the metal rods that were used for the legs, it was just holes drilled in the bottom. And when they got in a position, they pulled out the pieces of rod from their pack, shoved them into the mine, and then and placed it in the ground. What I did with mine, I made a folding version like the US mine. So I made my U-shape, out of metal rod and I used two staples to hold it in place that would act as my hinge. Now for the size of the mine, what I did, I looked at the technical information for the M18A1 and it holds about a pound and a half of C4. So I did some math, I figured out, well, how much area does a pound and a half of C4 cover? How much does it fill? And then I went off of that. So the thickness of a C4 block is about an inch. So I did that as my first measurement. I figured an inch and then I gave myself a half inch for shrapnel. I figured that would be plenty of room. And then that gave me my distance between the front and back boards. My actual uh, measurements for inside, I came up with three inches in height, roughly eight inches in length. And as I said, the depth would have been about inch and a half. Now, if you can see here, the very front, right behind the front piece of wood, would have been the shrapnel, and it would have been whatever they could have got a hold of. Nails, uh, bolts, pieces of shrapnel from exploded artillery shells, bombs and mortars, 
It could be cartridge casings. I got a bent one in here that I tossed in and I added to the mix. It would have been damaged links that could not have been reused. It would have been rocks and they also used glass. Now, for a communist that may be just fine to use rocks and glass for shrapnel, but anybody else, it's a violation of international law to use that stuff because it's hard to pick up on an x-ray machine. International law of war states that shrapnel has to be metallic so that it can be found easily by an x-ray machine. Now what I did, so those of you that want to copy something similar to this, make it look a little better, for using it in a display, for educational purposes, for reenactments or whatever, put your uh, little shrapnel material in there and then put some glue on it to hold it in place. I did that so it wouldn't fall out here. In real life, I know from my training for making homemade claymores, and I was trained on different containers than wooden box. We were trained to just pour the shrapnel in there and try to make it somewhat of an even layer, and then use our C4 explosives or other plastic explosive to kind of mold it in there and hold the shrapnel in place. Now I know with the DH-10s, because of how those were constructed, when they, after they poured the, put the shrapnel in there, they put a layer of wax over it. I doubt they did that with these. Because they're not pouring the explosive in afterwards, they would be molding it into place over the shrapnel. And then your back cover after the explosive is in, would be nailed in to hold it in place. Now for markings on these, when I came, when I came across the DH3 rectangular version, it said the VC would paint an arrow on top pointing the direction that the mine should be faced because you have only shrapnel on one side. So this is the front of the mine and I have an arrow pointing that direction which tells you hey it should be pointing that direction. Another thing that the VC would do which surprised me, they would mark the backs. They would put on there what model it is. They would put on there it's a DH-10, it's a DH-5, it's a DH-3. So, give you some what of a look here as to how I constructed it. For those of you that are going to try to copy this, and hopefully you get some good pictures here so that you can copy it for your displays. Now this is a mine that would not be put in place long term because just like with the TMD Bravo and the PMD6, it's made out of wood so it's going to degrade, it's going to fall apart, it's going to rot. This would be something that would be put in the ground or on the ground right before you're about to do an ambush. You might use something on a perimeter defense with this, but it would not be out there a long time. So how something like this would work, you would construct the box, drill the holes, attach the legs, you would then lay your shrapnel inside, mold your explosive over the top, attach your back piece. Then you would have to make your cap well. You already had the hole in the top, but you get, don't have anything in the explosive. So what they would do, they would use a tool like this, a US made crimpers, on one leg of it, it has a punch or a spike. So we had our hole here that was drilled in a casing. They would take that spike push it down into the explosive, and then twist it a few times to make a nice rounded cap well. <clears throat> so that when they went out to put this in place at the ambush, all they'd have to do is put the blasting cap in quickly. Now, because the back is floating on this, because of how I constructed it so I could open it up, I'm going to put some tape on here first to tape it together and then I will show you how something like this would have been in place. 
Now I did do a version of, I did, yeah. I did just get done doing this video outdoors and I did it in the grass so it looked as close to realistic as it could, how you would have encountered it in Vietnam in the field. But the wind was so bad, it wiped out over half the sound on the video. It was completely, you, you couldn't understand it, you couldn't hear a single word once the wind was picking up. And the wind's going pretty bad right now, you might actually hear it in the background even inside the shed here. So, but how this would have been in place. My wall back there is simulated. That's the uh, grass, that's the bushes, and behind that wall would have been where the ambush would be. So these mines would be put in between the ambusher and the group that's being ambushed, or it would have been put alongside of the group that's being ambushed, the target. So, we have our dirt here, we would have our bushes all along here. They would pull this out of their pack, they would attach the legs if they weren't already attached. Push it down into the dirt. Now they can raise and lower the mine by either pushing the front end more or the back end more. So that would give you more of an angle, less of an angle. And you can also adjust your, your height by pushing it down into ground more or not pushing it in as far. After the mine would be in place, they would take their electric blasting cap, like with this uh, <coughs> firing wire from a, a Claymore training set. They would take the blasting cap inserted into the fuse well that was made for the mine in the mine and then string the firing wire back to the firing position and then when the u.s or arvin or south korean or australian troops would enter the kill zone they would uh, connect the circuit to the batteries or they would initiate the firing device and fire the mine. One issue I have with this is the coils I need for the uh, blasting cap are on the very bottom underneath all of these. Because on the US stuff, you're supposed to go from the firing position out to the mine. But that's what I could come up with. Now, like I said, I only came across the one picture on this in someone's collection or in a museum collection. I talked with a friend who knows some on military history. If he's heard of this, if he's come across it, he knew what I was talking about when I mentioned it because he said he had watched a documentary within the past six months or so here on the Vietnam War, and it showed a picture of a homemade wooden claymore, more than likely the same one that I came across. So whatever museum is holding this, you know, they allowed a picture of it inside a documentary, but he did not remember the name of the documentary. But that's as close as I could get it from what I remembered. It's essentially just a wooden box with the shrapnel, with the explosive, with legs on it so it could be uh, emplaced on the ground to be used against U.S. troops in the field during Vietnam. Is it possible something like this is still being produced today somewhere around the world? I, I really would bet it is. Now, the Claymore, when that came out, that was revolutionary. And the Viet Cong realized that. It was used very effectively against them in the jungles. It's a very effective close-range weapon. So they copied it. The first version they came up with was the DH-10. It's a video that I want to do sometime over the next few months here. After I get my workshop done, 
I do not have my torch and stuff set up yet so that I can uh, do some of the uh, welding of metals together to do the casings for a DH-10 so I can show you in a video. Once I get that done, then I can do the DH-10 example and I can show you. So look for that sometime in the future. It may not be till springtime. I don't know, but I'll get to it as soon as I can. But uh, the, the uh, Soviets copied the M18A1 Claymore mine, and their version of it is the Mon 50 M-O-N. It's been copied by pretty much every country you can think of. Even Iraq was making their own versions of the Claymore before Saddam was uh, removed from power. So it's, I was not surprised when I came across the picture of the VC making them out of wood. You know, they used the materials they had available. So now as with any of this type of stuff, don't, do not make one of these for real life for use for nefarious purposes. Do not make a real mine unless you're in a total collapse situation, unless you're fighting off an invading force into the country, unless it's a without rule of law situation and you're trying to defend yourself because you will violate multiple laws, federal, state, local, you name it, you're gonna violate it. But if you're trying to make one of these for use in a display, for reenactment or whatever, well, here you go. Now you got at least somewhat of an idea. There would not actually be a piece of tape on it like you see on there right now. I just did that to hold the back cover on. The whole thing would have been nailed together. The picture I seen was not painted. I just painted mine so that it would cover up how cruddy the wood looks. I used wood left over from the pallets that I was using on the other mines. So now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, Always remember, essay ons.